Hello everyone, I'm Jia Qi Han. Here I will introduce our approach named Geo Ensemble for the Open Catalyst Challenge 2022. Our team members include Jia Qi Han, Tian Bian, Ge Yan Ye, Kai Li Ma, Yu Duo Zhi, Kang Fei Zhao, Ting Yang Xu, Wen Bing Huang, and Yu Rong. The members are with Tencent AI Lab, Tsinghua University, Renmin University of China, and the Chinese University of Hong Kong. The Open Catalyst project aims at tackling the energy scarcity and climate change issue. For instance, in China, the majority of electricity production is fueled by burning coal or fossil fuels. These processes negatively affect the climate, whereas wind or solar energy are much cleaner. The core interest here of the Open Catalyst project is to help discover new catalysts that can efficiently produce clean and renewable energy thus help reducing carbon emission and alleviating climate change. Specifically, Open Catalyst project investigates the relaxation process of the adsorbate and catalyst from the initial high energy state towards the low energy state driven by the interactions in between. The energy of the relaxed state is useful in determining critical chemical properties like the reaction rate of the system. In this year's challenge, IS2RE and S3F2 million data are approved to use in model training and validation. With the task specified, two core challenges are identified. The first is how to model the complex dynamics mechanisms of the interacting particles in both the adsorbate and catalyst, and secondly, how to effectively incorporate the S3F and S2RE data. Here we present GMNOC, which is our adaptation of graph mechanics networks GMN on the open catalyst data. In GMN, I clear 22, we propose a universal multi-channel O3 equivalent function. Consider the geometric information Z and non-geometric information H. Our proposed form is specified as phi ZH equals Z times sigma, the inner product of Z transpose and Z concatenated by H. Here, sigma is an MLP. This formulation can universally approximate any O3 equivalent function with arbitrarily small error. The corresponding invariant counterpart is also provided as a function per psi. With these specifications, we now introduce a GM layer. We first compute the edge message between node i and j. For example, zij equals zi minus zj concatenated by rij where Rij is the edge direction vector. Similarly, Hij is a concatenation of Hi, Hj, and the length of Rij featurized by the Gaussian kernel. The equivalent edge message Mij is computed by calling our equivalent function phi. The messages are then aggregated within the neighborhood determined by a cutoff to obtain the updated node representation. The GML layer satisfies E3 covariance overall, which is important for model generalization. Now we discuss how to leverage the proposed GML layers to build up a powerful model with enhanced capacity for challenging tasks like OC here. We start by stacking multiple GML layers to build up a deep model with more trainable parameters. We initialize Z as zero vectors and H as an learnable embedding of the atomic numbers. Both Z and H are passed through several GM layers for effective geometric message passing. And finally, we use the output Z to produce the node-wise geometric vector F, which is the atom force and the energy for its system E as a pooling of the node features H. Furthermore, inspired by the virtual node technique in traditional GNNs, as well as the motivation from density functional theory calculations, which involves computing the global electron density, we introduce a global representation module, which is shared across all GMN layers. The global module is also implemented using our GMN function phi. To combine the global representation with local representation of each layer, we extra introduce the combination operation, which first uses our invariant form psi to compute the invariant wij, and then multiplies the aggregation of w by the global representation V. The computational flowchart is illustrated in the right figure, where we can see that all modules are densely connected to ensure training stability. 
The force and energy are similarly obtained from the last GMN layer. Thirdly, we also equip GMN with a multi-head mechanism to further enhance model capacity. In detail, as we can see in a plain GMN layer, the bottleneck of parameter complexity lies in the dense inner product matrix, which is of complexity O H square, where H is the number of vector channels of Z. This square complexity limits our choices for a larger number of fish. For example, if we choose H as 64, we will need a representation space with dimension 4096, which is too large. However, setting H as a small number will inevitably limit the model expressivity. To overcome this challenge, we designed a multi-head mechanism for geometric messy passing of GM layers. In detail, for Z, we separate Z into several subspaces split across vector channels. Afterwards, the inner product is only computed within each subspace instead of the global dense matrix. In this way, we are able to reduce the parameter complexity by a factor of n head without shrinking the number of vector channels edge. Instead of a dense inner product matrix, now we have the blockwise diagonal inner product matrices within each subspace. With this technique, we are able to significantly increase the number of vector channels when fitting the model into the GPU memory. All the three core aspects we mentioned here are important for the performance of our model on OC data. The overall model named GeoEnsemble is an example of four geometric models, namely GMNOC, as seen by Lawrence Sitting et al., and GemNet by Gastager et al. Notably, SCN AS2RE here is an SCN firstly pre trained on S2EF 2 million data and then fine tuned on S2RE data equipped by the delta position loss. The relaxed energy is then directly predated without relaxation. The other three models are trained on SVF2 million data and then applied by the relaxation process to get the relaxed energy prediction. The results of four models are ensembled simply by a linear weighted average scheme with the coefficients determined by validation. The number of parameters of each model are presented in the table as well. Here we provide more details on these models we use. It typically takes thousands of GPU hours to fully train the models. Regarding the inference speed, the direct model is significantly faster than the relaxation models, since the relaxation process needs to iteratively call the model forward function until a steady state is reached, or the number of steps reaches a preset maximum tolerance. We also evaluate our approach on the public leaderboard maintained by the OC team. The leaderboard here is for the OC21 challenge test set. Our GMNOC model reaches an energy MAE of around 0.42 when trained on SVF2 million data instead of SVF all. Note that some of the methods here on the leaderboard use SVF all for training, which is larger than SVF2 million we use in this challenge, thus the results may not be exactly comparable. Our final GeoEnsemble model with SVF2 million achieves an energy MAE around 0.34, which is only worse than the SEN train with SVF all data. As future works, we would like to further borrow more inspirations from real physical processes to motivate the design of our model, and meanwhile explore more effective ways of leveraging the existing data. We also believe there are still room for training process optimization on such a challenging data set of the Open Catalyst. Finally, I would like to thank all collaborators that provide necessary support, significant efforts, and useful suggestions throughout the competition. This is a joint team with members coming from Tencent Nia Lab, Tsinghua University, CUHK, and Renmin University of China. If you are interested in any topic or technique we discuss in this talk, welcome to reach out. Thank you.